what is up everybody it's Finn Diesel here we're going to be tying up the Matuka streamer this is a pattern from New Zealand that is based primarily on English style uh, trout patterns but uh, it came about because there was a bait fish there that uh, looked exactly like uh, the feathers of a brown bittern or in Maori called the Matuku so let's go ahead and get started we've got the Semperfly Nano Soak this is a 12 aught in white I'll go ahead and start this right behind uh, the eye and work my way down the shank of the hook um, it's interesting that uh, since then uh, that that uh, <clears throat> actually the using the feathers of that uh, bird has been banned. So we're going to be using some different ones today. Um, but uh, one of the things it's known for is its ribbing, and we're going to be using a French oval silver tinsel. Um, it's a little bit thicker. Traditionally, most people I know use like a wire or a flat tinsel, but I really like this French oval. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, get that started. And I'm going to tie it in, leaving a little bit of a gap between the eye and uh, where we tie that in. That will make our life easier later when we are going to be finishing off the fly. But I'm going to tie this down the shank of the hook, keeping it on top. And then a little trick here for your uh, creating a natural taper. And to help with that first wrap is... Once I get about to where I'm going to do my first wrap, you can see our taper slightly goes down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of slide that tinsel over to the side. And that will help us get that first wrap started and also basically cheat our taper. But we're fooling the fish because they look at it from primarily from the side, not top to bottom. Plus we'll have the feather here on top so no one will ever know. But you guys will know because I uh, told you how to do it. So go ahead and once that's on the side, we'll go ahead and do some cranking wraps, touching wraps all the way back up to the eye. Um, really focusing on creating this uh, to be as uniform as possible without any little uh, divots or uh, parts of that tinsel that may be protruding up. Um, so really work on a uniform bobby with your uh, nice, nice wraps as you work your way up. But um, <clears throat> we are going to go ahead, and this will be using a, um, a floss body. But you can see right there, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and set this French tinsel back here in a hair clip to keep it out of my way. Because we're going to be using some Semperfly's uh, 400D floss in black. And we're going to be using four strands. And so I'm going to cut off about a 20-inch piece here. And then uh, we'll, we'll basically do that twice and I'll cut another one and then we'll fold them in half so um, it's better to have more material than less in my opinion so if you have to waste a little you know two to three inches of the material that's okay um, that's better than coming back up the uh, the shank and running out of material so um, I'm gonna fold these two strands in half so we uh, have a little bit of a loop and make sure the ends are aligned that's kinda critical you wanna make sure that you because uh, if they're not all if you got three three that are the same length and one that's short it's going to create a problem so go ahead and tie this in right here about an eye length behind the eye and what we'll do is we'll snip off these tag ends to get them out of the way and at this point you could whip finish and get this uh, bobbin and thread out of your way but I'm just going to hand palmer this and if you get a little bit of fraying here that's okay we'll cover it up and what we're going to do is we're going to take this floss and go all the way down the shank of the hook and right here when we start we're going to be doing kind of more vertical wraps I'd say that's roughly a uh, I don't know 80 degree angle 70 to 5 degree angle that I'm coming around and working my way down and you can see how that floss using four strands is now starting to kind of lay flat and that is um, as we work our way down we want it to start laying more flat and that's also going to help build our taper and the way I'm doing that is just as I'm sliding it through my fingers I'm allowing it to spread and uh, I'm not trying to force the material to do what I want but allowing the material to work for me so as we get back here towards the bend or, or towards the bend where we're going to be ending this I'm starting to do steeper wraps almost to like 50 degree and uh, when we come back up I'll even go a little bit steeper here just so we're not building bulk here at the rear and you can see right there those are fanned out real nice and so we're not adding a, a ton of bulk but we're creating that nice taper and then now I'm gonna start overlapping those wraps a little bit more and start going a little bit more vertical making sure not to twist my floss those four strands together but still trying to lay them as flat as I can working my way back up and you can see how this is easier with more material um, 
Whereas right now, if I had a half an inch left, it'd be problematic, and we'd have to get out our hackle pliers, and I'd probably use a few swear words. So we don't want to do that. I'm going to waste a little bit of material, so that works for me. As we get here, we've got that eye length gap there. That is critical to have. It makes your life easier later on. And uh, I'm still not perfect at these. Um, I enjoy tying them, but I know there's a lot of tires out there that are more experienced in tying these than I but man, I sure have fun with these uh, more English style classical uh, uh, patterns that are um, manipulating feathers and floss. But here's a little trick. I know they make a tool for this, but I just use the uh, um, handles on my scissors and I just lightly hold these up against the, uh, the floss here. And I'm just kind of working it out to get rid of any imperfections. It will slightly spread that floss to be a little bit flatter. Um, if you push too hard, you're going to actually move it. Um, potentially depending on how uh, tight you wrapped it so just really lightly just go across and if you've got a thick spot just kind of work it out nice and slow and that is good enough for me um, this isn't going in a shadow box it will be fish so um, that's perfect for me now we are going to be using our um, tying in our wing and the way you do this is I'm using a uh, Whiting Farms this is their freshwater streamer hackle um, it, uh, this is silver badger, so it's not using the illegal uh, Matuku uh, feathers. But what I want to do is I want to look at this cape. We're looking, one, for length, but two, I'm looking for more of a pointy um, tips. And you can see how those are a little bit rounded. And so I'm going to come over here to the back side. And, yeah, that's, we need to also look at length because I want about the tail extending off roughly the length of the shank or the length of my floss and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab two feathers and I'm going to pair them meaning um, have them curving into each other um, and that way they're pushing against each other they'll stay in place and then I'll measure these two look pretty good they look very similar in uh, the fiber length from the stem and I'll go ahead and strip off the one side and you can do this individually I do it together so I know um, basically I can just put it right on right after this um, but you can also do it individually and this way I can measure to see how I'm doing and you can see I'm kinda getting into the fluff there so I'm gonna shorten the tail up a little bit and I'll just strip off a little bit more here and you want that uh, uh, the bottom hackle that we left on there to be about at the bend um, if you take too much, it will dip down. If you don't take enough, it's going to go around the, the hook a little bit, and that's okay too. But we'll go ahead and tie these stems in right here. And you can preen off the fluff if you want. I'm just leaving it here because we're going to snip it out. But I want to make sure those two stems are right there, dab smack together, right on the top of the shank of the hook, and measure it out, and that looks amazing. So um, for this next step, you're going to need a bodkin or something pointy like a... I don't know, a paper clip, something to help you or assist you in doing this. And all you do is I'm pulling these feathers a little bit tight, and I'll go ahead and just split them right here, right where we have that tinsel sitting, that oval tinsel sitting on the other side. And you want to make sure your uh, wraps are tight so when you pull on this, the feather doesn't come out. And all I'm going to do is push those um, fibers back towards the eye and create a little bit of a gap and then we're going to take our French oval or wire or whatever you're using flat tinsel or um, flash maybe and I'm just going to bring it up and over and around keeping those uh, two feather stems right on top of the shank and I'll hold tension right there and then you want to keep that bodkin close because that's what we're going to do we're going to basically create our little gaps here all the way up um, so the main thing that frustrates people from what I've heard about this pattern is creating a consistent ribbing um, all the way up the, uh, the shank of the fly, but that is the pattern. Um, so really take your time right now and just make sure your wraps are going at the right direction, palmering up this uh, shank. Um, take the, a little bit extra time. If you want to count the uh, hackle fibers, go ahead and do that. I'm just eyeballing it. It helps to use a really good hackle because you can see right here, I measured that one wrong. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust, taking a few more. And um, you don't have to worry when you're using good hackle about those uh, fibers coming off. You can manipulate them quite a bit. And if they're too fragile for you to do this step using a bodkin and kind of spreading it around, um, 
I don't know if it, I would trust it fishing because I would think they would come out on the first hit or two or dragging it across the rock and all of a sudden you don't have any hackle fibers left. So um, good hackle is something um, that I find of utmost importance. And this, uh, this freshwater streamer hackle, uh, a new, fairly new product, is um, awesome. And so I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to sit here and watch, but you get the point. Just make sure those um, two stems are staying on top of the shank to the best of your ability. Um, they're going to sit right next to each other, and um, you don't want to be trapping down any hackle fibers. If you have one laying kind of skewumpus coming off to the side, just readjust your tinsel, back it off, but make sure you always keep tension. And then as I get up here towards the eye of the hook, where we ended our... Um, are uh, with that eye gap spacing that's where I'm gonna end these um, this this tinsel and I'm gonna do about I don't know 15 or 20 wraps because I do not want that tinsel coming out but go ahead and snip out your stems at this point get them out of your way um, and then really really get that uh, tinsel secure um, you could even do a secondary wrap if you want uh, but we we don't really want um, a step here we want this uh, gap spacing here to be even so I'm going to try and manipulate this one a little bit uh, sometimes this goes easier than than this is going right now um, and other times it's more difficult but um, I'll be honest with you if you don't have that little spacing here it's going to be miserable uh, to do the head on this so make sure you got a little about a hook eyes um, spacing between your your wing uh, the hackle we just tied in, and um, let's go ahead and check that out. Check the other side. Check our uh, our ribbing, and uh, that looks pretty good. So I got a little straggler right here we'll cut out, and um, I don't think the fish are going to care. But, yeah, that looks pretty uh, good to me. Both stems are on top. I got one little ribbing here that's bothering me, but I just want to check to make sure they're tight. And, yeah, those are good. We, we're good. This should be fine. So that is um, a bulk of our fly. It looks like a, you know, a mohawk uh, partier with, uh, you know, some punk rock band guy right now. I, maybe I'll do my hair like this in the future. But let's just, just check to make sure our tips align. Everything looks good. Uh, look it over because at this point you could always back that off and, and retie in a new feather if you're OCD. But uh, we're going to put a throat on this uh, using just some white bucktail. Um, I know you can you can also use a, a hackle, soft hackle, or some sort of uh, chicken fiber for this. I just the bucktail is pretty easy for me, and it stays a little bit stiff. And I generally do a little bit heavier of a throat, um, just because I think it gives a nice uh, presence. And I'm just going to pull out some of my longer fibers. I'm not going to align these. You can if you want. Uh, but I want it to be kind of a natural taper, and I uh, most people use the hook point as a reference. I'm going to make sure that the bulk of my tips end at the hook point, but I'll have a few that are tapering a little longer and a few that are a little shorter. So that's just personal preference. You can do whatever you want um, and make it look as perfect as you want. But, uh, yeah, that's just, this is just the throat, and we'll go ahead and secure that. A um, little tip I didn't explain right there was I, I do a wrap around the bucktail before placing it down. That kind of just helps group it together and allowing me to really just kind of keep it focused as a group. And you can see right there the bulk of it ends at the hook point, but I got a few stragglers that are a little longer. Yeah, this is maybe a little long. But I don't know if the fish will care as much. But another critical thing right here is we're tying off those butt ends. Make sure we keep this um, gap right here as clean as you can get it. And uh, I really like how that turned out, especially with this silver badger. So um, go ahead and just uh, make sure you clean up this head the best you can. Uh, the next step is we're going to be tying in some hackle and palmering it around. And so you really want to make sure you don't have like a step or something for the hackle to slide off uh, because we want to use touching wraps and create a really nice dense head um, and we'll be using um, uh, basically where this uh, freshwater streamer came from breeding the the American um, hackle line with I believe a, a, a guinea and so this right here is the regular American um, uh, hackle so they're a little bit bigger fibers a little bit more webby I think this will make a nice uh, head and complement this fly very well because this uh, black hackle has a nice sheen to it. 
And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to not really use the very tip of this because those fibers are a little bit small. And I will tie in uh, just by prepping that, uh, splitting the fibers, and then to help create that um, nice head to Palmer, I'm going to strip that feather down towards the eye, and then I'll do pull it back and do two wraps and then snip it out. That just kind of gives me a nice platform to go down as I'm palmering so that it's not going to um, step off that oval tinsel as much. So now that that feather's secure, we're basically just don't trap your bucktail and don't uh, have any fibers go squampus on you. Uh, preen them back, uh, fold them back as you're, as you're going around and just uh, give it a nice stroke back towards the tail and then start your palmering, avoiding your thread bobbin. But we did about five, six wraps, so I don't have to worry if it slides off a couple um, wraps. You could do a whip, uh, half hitch to secure it in place or just go for it, man. Take the risk. And we'll palmer this around basically with touching wraps all the way to the eye, and I'm going to crowd the eye. You could leave yourself more spacing, um, but I really want this nice dense head, and uh, we wanted this to be as long as possible since we're using a 4X. So... Um, we're going to get probably another two, three um, full wraps around here. You want to make sure that this hackle is not longer than your wing, but uh, proportionate and blends in well. And you can see right now I'm starting to get into more of the webby fibers. And so we'll probably just end uh, right about here. I don't think I can get any more wraps either. So just go up and over and behind and then uh, preen those back, do a few wraps in front. And uh, we're not going to be building a nice uh, traditional um, English style or uh, a salmon fly style black head on this. We're just going to uh, finish it uh, as is. So let's go ahead and snip out our, our uh, stem there and make sure we got that uh, stem secure down in those wraps. And since we are using a nano silk and a 12 aught, just be a little bit careful uh, when you're pulling tension around these hackle fibers. Um, because uh, this could potentially cut it, but um, I think we're good. So, man, that looks pretty good as is. So, let's get some eyes on here. Um, the eyes are not necessary, but I like to add them. I believe that the original pattern doesn't have eyes, um, but would be right finished as is and just put a little um, uh, black uh, head with. Uh, but we'll go ahead and add these uh, jungle cock eyes. I'll prep them. Um, this is a, a proportionate uh, eye for this fly, and we're going to leave them a little bit longer, um, as long as I can. And so we'll go ahead and measure that again just to see how that lines up, and that looks awesome. I think this jungle cock really complements this fly really well. And so I'll just go ahead and tie that in with two, three wraps, check to see how I like it. It's positioned up at a good angle. I like it, and so we'll do a couple more wraps, one working forward more towards the eye. And then generally how I secure these in is I fold it back over itself and do two more wraps. But let's get the other side tied in first so we're not building, um, you know, making it harder uh, later on to finish this fly with our whip finish. So same process, uh, strip off these, uh, these excess fibers and... Um, we want to make sure that these are proportionate to each other. I, I pull them off in relatively the same area, same size eyes, and then we will go ahead and put it at the same angle. But since the fly is upside down at this point, um, make sure you're angling it uh, correctly so it matches. And we'll do two, three wraps. Check our positioning, and that looks pretty good. Check our length, and we are golden. So let's go ahead and wrap those stems back, and this just helps secure them even more so that you don't have to worry about them coming out. But as I'm as I'm rotating this vise around, I really like this head um, using that American hackle. It really seems to create a nice little uh, dome there, nice profile and complement that silver badger. This looks like a pretty uh, effective fly. Um, now we just need to uh, hide our thread. So I'm gonna get out a black Sharpie and we'll just go ahead and color a section at a time. I'm going to probably do this in two or three uh, steps just to keep the uh, uh, minimize the uh, chance of me having my thread wraps come off and losing what we just did. So we'll do this in stages. So I'm just uh, basically wrapping this now th white uh, this white thread that we uh, colored with a sharpie up and over all our, our our thread wraps that we used to finish this fly. You could have whip finished uh, before tying in um, either the jungle cock or the um, 
well, technically at any point on this fly, you could have started with black thread, but I just really, uh, I, I use this white primarily on almost everything. So um, just go ahead and keep wrapping. If you notice you've got some white spots, uh, color up some more um, and uh, keep, keep uh, doing some wraps and then we'll get ready to do a uh, whip finish. Um, you don't need to do a double whip finish. We're just going to do a single three turn whip finish because we will be putting a little bit of resin on this head just to solidify it, add a little bit of sheen, and um, I don't think we'll get a little traditional black head, but eh, I changed my mind. I'm going to do double whip finish. That's the advantage of fly tying. You can always change your mind as you're going. So um, We are now um, well into finishing this fly, so I'm just going to grab some of this uh, um, UV resin, and I'm just going to brush it on the best of my ability, avoiding getting it on the hackle and also avoiding covering the uh, the hook eye and as you do that um, you don't want to add too much so that it drips so that's why we're going to do probably two coats and we'll just cure that up slightly and this fly is looking awesome I can't wait to fish this this is going to be perfect so let's go ahead and do another coat now and the real advantage to this pattern is you can tie this up in so many different color combinations. Um, the, the, the hackle fibers are available um, in so many different patterns. You could use the American hackle. You could use this freshwater streamer hackle um, as your wing. You've got tinsels in all sorts of colors. You've got floss. Uh, you could do a dubbing body on here. You could do a different head. Um, I know like uh, one of my more favorite, the Leprechaun version, which is has a really hot orange head or yellow head with a green um, wing. Um, so go ahead and just tie some up in as many color combinations as you want. And fish them, um, swing them, strip them, and uh, hopefully they uh, pierce some lips. Uh, but it's a more traditional pattern that uh, is an effective streamer. So have fun with it. Mm -hmm. 